Father, this is our desire this morning is that your son would be seen to be the great and glorious and magnificent and impressive and radiant Savior. He is our only hope. He is the one that we long to glorify. Glorify him even now as we remember his death for us at the cross, his bodily death, his shed blood. You have given to us everything. There's nothing you have held back from us in regards to our salvation, Lord. You are kind and you are generous. You are abundant in your generosity. Open our eyes to see him more clearly now. In Jesus' name, amen. As we prepare our hearts and minds to remember the bodily death and the shed blood of Jesus Christ at the cross for forgiveness of sins, we are, we're going to turn to Psalm 135 in our Bibles for help. There will be some men here who will grab some Bibles and make their way up the aisle. If you would like to have a copy of a Bible in your hands, so you can follow along. Just put your hand up, and they'll make sure you get one. And let's turn to Psalm 135. Five times in the first four verses, the psalmist commands Israel to worship, to praise Yahweh. Verse 1, praise Yahweh. Praise the name of Yahweh. Praise him, O servants of Yahweh. You who stand in the house of Yahweh, in the courts of the house of our God. Praise Yahweh, for Yahweh is good. Sing praises to his name, for it is lovely. For Yahweh has chosen Jacob for himself, Israel for his own possession. One motive for the psalmist's call to worship is in verses 5 and 6. For I know that Yahweh is great and that our Lord is above all gods. Whatever Yahweh pleases, he does. In heaven and in earth, in the seas and in all deeps. This motive for worship is obviously one of many motivations, even for us this morning, in our worship of Jesus Christ. And it can actually sweetly help us prepare to remember his death in our place as we celebrate the Lord's table together. Consider with me just verse 5 and 6 for a moment. Verse 5, I know that Yahweh is great and that our Lord is above all gods. This morning we know this too. We know about God, what the psalmist knew about him, that God in heaven is great and he's incomparable. There is no one like him at all. There is nothing that compares to him. He has no rival approaching him from any direction. No one can diminish or demote him from his exalted supremacy. No human rivals his godness. No relationship you could have with anybody else on earth would rival his godness. No experience you could have on earth could ever equal his godness. No earthly delight or earthly enjoyment or creaturely good thing could sit as an equal next to him. He is the greatest. Our Lord Jesus Christ is above all others all the others that men could foolishly think to exalt in worship. He's unrivaled. And from that position of great unrivaled exaltation, God does whatever he pleases. Look at verse six. Whatever Yahweh pleases, he does. And it doesn't matter the arena. In heaven, in earth, in the seas, in all deeps. Pick the arena you want. He is never at a disadvantage. God is never limited. He's never struggling to do what pleases him. In heaven, he is without limitations, always doing what pleases him. And on earth, whether it is at the bottom of the seas where you and I will, Lord willing, never go, or whether it's in your house, on your street, in your neighborhood, he has no limitations, but instead he is always doing what he pleases. You can't find a season of life, you can't find an arena of life in which God is disadvantaged toward what pleases him. 
obviously in your seasons of blessings and in your good and in the enjoyments that you have, you recognize that. You believe all of that is from a God who has no limitations on him. He is unrivaled in doing what he pleases in your blessings. But in your trials, in what saddens your heart, and in what burdens you, and in what tempts you to lose hope, you do not have a God who is disadvantaged or struggling through it, through his limitations to do what pleases him. He is the unrivaled God, and as such, he is doing everything he pleases in your adversity. He is not being thwarted from doing what pleases him in your trial. Now, that may not mean that you understand everything that is happening to you, and it may not wipe away every tear from your eye, but it does give you cause for worship nonetheless. You can't just worship him when it's good. He has given you abundant reason in himself to worship him even when you're burdened. And the reason is in him. He is unrivaled in his godness, and he is doing whatever he pleases. You can and you must, believer, you must worship him who is in no way limited towards you in your trial. And our unrivaled Savior who is never limited or disadvantaged toward what pleases him, is the very one who died on the cross and who rose from the dead for our salvation. The father did exactly what pleased him in his son's trial, in his son's adversity. He crushed his son for us. It pleased him to do that. He was at no disadvantage at the cross. There were no limitations put on him at the cross as his son suffered to secure our salvation. He did every single thing that pleased him. So believer this morning, proclaim to your heart again his death until he comes. And when you receive the bread and cup, you can eat and drink in worship and in hope. God was unrivaled at the cross in his supremacy, and he did exactly what pleased him to forgive you. Resolve to trust him more fully. Resolve to walk more faithfully before him this morning as you eat and drink. If you do not know this Jesus, if you are not yet trusting him and trusting his death at the cross for your forgiveness of sins, or if he is not yet your unrivaled God, if him doing what pleases him is not the comfort of your heart and mind in your trials yet, then this morning, let the tray with the bread and the cup, let it pass you by. And instead, take the moments of silence that precede that and follow that to consider your need for a savior who is Jesus. At the judgment of every man and every woman, Jesus will be unrivaled in his power and he will do what pleases him there. He will do what pleases his holiness. Take that time to consider the reality of God's wrath against you if you will not trust in him and in his death at the cross for you. Cry out to him this morning to save you. Cling to him by faith. If you have questions, you can come find me. You can ask really anybody around you but consider Jesus Christ this morning. Men, will you please come and serve us? You may eat and drink on your own when your heart is prepared, and then I will close our time in prayer.